Greetings, this is August 17th at 6 p.m. and I would like to draw your attention to the links below where you can get updated maps and evacuation alerts and orders. Uh, I try to get information as quickly as I can, however I'm looking at a period of time and this may occur from the previous afternoon to the moment that I start this video. It does take a little while to compile uh, the screen, so if you're looking for the most recent updates, visit the regional links below. This is an image from yesterday using NASA's world view, and we're seeing a close-up of the region, the Elephant Hill wildfire. Now we've switched to today, where we have an updated image and we can see a dissipation of the cloud cover and an increase in the amount of smoke and haze hovering over this area. Now I would like to draw your attention to an infrared map of Canada provided by the NRC. I am noticing a diminishing of infrared compared with maps we were looking at two to three days ago. When we zoom into the Elephant Hill wildfire, I'm noticing two areas of concern uh, south of High Heum and also the northern flank. We are beginning to see some infrared appear towards Green Lake and east of 70 Mile House. This is the first infrared indications in this specific region. When we look at the 12-hour map overlaid on the 6-hour map, we can see that these are recent hot spots. When we go to the 6-hour map alone, we see that they are older than 6 hours and there are no new developments in a 6-hour time period. I've also been watching the situation in two areas of volatility south of High Hume Lake. In the closest indications, approximately one kilometer south, we see a lot of random infrared behavior and, and at the northern flank of these indications I see what could be almost a half circle of uh, controlled strategy. And again, I'm speculating, uh, but it does appear to have some organization there. Now we're looking at a radiative power map made available through that Google KML bundle linked below. We can see these areas of intensity south of High Heum, then it zigzags and goes southeast towards the Dead Man River Canyon. And these are confirmed by the infrared that we see on the graphic screen. Now we've traveled to the northern flank. We're looking east of 70 Mile House and southeast of Green Lake. These were the most recent expansions of the Elephant Hill fire and up till now have been obscured. We'll zoom in closer but I'd like you to notice these striations to the right of center. They almost look like controlled uh, strategies being displayed in infrared. Uh, first we're going to look at the satellite overview and this may give you an indication of the territory and some of the landmarks. Now we are zooming into the area uh, to the east of 70 Mile House and you can see the forestation and the developed roads and some of the water bodies nearby. In the center of the screen running north-south is a pipeline. On the left-hand upper portion is Highway 97 and 70 Mile House. In the lower left-hand portion you can possibly make out the old Caribou Road to 70 Mile House. And in the upper portion to the right we see Hutchinson Road and Sodium, Marsden and Hutchinson Lakes. Now we've moved northeast from this position and we're just west of the Rayfield River looking at those infrared striations in the forested area 
and we can see the southern slopes of Mount Jim and the North Bonaparte Road in the upper portion of your screen. Next we're going to look at time delineated infrared as displayed on the Google KML package link below. Uh, we can see red and orange are the most recent spots occurring within the last 12 and 6 hour periods and the yellow is the oldest occurring within a 24 hour period. I'd like to focus on two areas of intensity south and east of Hyheum. You can see these infrared hot spots to the right of center on your screen. Uh, they are new indications uh, within the last six hour time period and I'd like to watch those as well as the northern flank and see what infrared pops up on this system from those extensions that went towards the southeast of Green Lake. We've also rolled over now to the radiative power indications and I want to draw your attention to the south east flank where we were watching uh, a couple of hot spots move down towards the Skidgetson area and those are now no longer showing. Most of the volatility appears to be concentrated uh, up on the plateau in the northern flank uh, to the northeast by Young Lake uh, in the central portion around Hyheum and slightly southeastwards towards the Dead Man River. Uh, the areas around Highway 97, uh, Cache Creek Hills, Boston Flats, Chasm, Clinton, and the Aerostone uh, western slopes appear unchanged. And I'm going to interpret this as uh, evidence that our wildfire crews are successful in suppressing and uh, building defensive strategies around these areas. We are jumping over to Windy now and I'm looking at nine kilometers virtually coming from the south. Uh, the wind has shifted and changed throughout the day as we have this sort of western, southwestern push. Depending on where you are on plateaus or in valleys, uh, it could be coming from a different direction and even from the northwest. As you see on the forecast, uh, the wind direction is constantly shifting. Uh, it's staying at a relatively low velocity until tomorrow. Uh, it could come at uh, 12, 13 kilometers an hour. I was worried about some increase in wind velocity on Saturday and Sunday, but that seems to be uh, now dissipating. And we can see a lot of cloud cover with minimal precipitation. So uh, just be aware of lightning in the area. I would like to revisit the Hansville fire. We're looking at a radiative power map uh, from the Google KML and I want you to notice some of the intensity areas. This is yesterday at approximately 9.30 p.m. and I'm just going to roll the map into today. It will jiggle a little bit but you may be able to see that there is a general lowering of intensity along the perimeter edges. We'll try this again and zoom in specifically to the southeastern flank. Here we're looking at yesterday and now we're looking at today. So yes I am seeing a reduction in the radiative power uh, as displayed and recorded by this MODIS system. A uh, quick look at the big bar cam and it does look dry on those hillsides. However, there is a touch of blue in the air and it might look like an otherwise pleasant sunny August evening. So if you get an opportunity, please get outside and enjoy our beautiful surroundings. I know that Highway 97 has uh, changed all of its alerts and there's more access available. Be safe everyone and I'm going to conclude this update by saying our wildfire crews 
appear to be stomping this fire down.